Hey everyone, I'm Felix and in this video I'm going to give you an introduction into my book Python for Excel, what it's all about, what's in there, what you will learn and what we will build. Now the book is about 300 pages strong, it's split up into four parts and 12 chapters and a good start to, to give you an overview about the book is by going to the book's homepage which I will link down below. So. Here we do have the, the four parts. So the first one is about a, a, an introduction to Python. The second one is an introduction to Pandas, the data analytics library in, in, in Python. The third one is about reading and writing Excel files without having to have Excel installed. So that's a solution that will work across all different operating systems. And then the last part is about Excel Wings, which allows you to automate Excel on Mac OS and Windows. So I would just suggest we walk through one chapter after another and I'll give you a very high level overview of what's expecting you. So in the first chapter, it's an introductory chapter and it's mainly about uh, giving you some answers why the requ feature request, which is called Python as an Excel scripting language is on the first uh, rank here on the official issue tracker from, from, from Excel. And so we're going to find out like what Python brings to the table, what, uh, you know, VBA and uh, the, the more traditional ways of, of doing automating things in VBA and Power Query are missing. Then the second chapter is about uh, tools. So I'm going to give you an introduction into the, the terminal on Mac or the command prompt on Windows. We will use them in the form of an anaconda prompt. Uh, we will definitely learn what that is in the book. And you can use them to, to run Python code or uh, issue some other statements, some other commands that uh, we will use throughout the book. So one of them, for example, is to start an instance of Visual Studio Code, which is the text editor that we will use throughout the book. And the third one is actually Jupyter Notebooks. And Jupyter Notebooks are here in the browser. It's a, it's a, it's a development environment which allows you to uh, run code in an interactive way. It's got sort of a lot of overlap with what you traditionally would do in a spreadsheet. So we will get back to that and look into uh, running one of these notebooks in just a minute. Um, then we can move on to chapter three here. It's an introduction to Python. It's not an introduction if you have never ever in your whole life heard anything about programming. So it's, you know, it's sort of good to, if you already know what a for loop usually is conceptually, but if you have done it once in VBA or if you write nested if statements in a cell, um, that will give you sort of the, the required basics. But in this chapter, I'll just, you know, allow you to transition from Excel, from an Excel world or from any other programming environment into the Python specific syntax with like the least hassle. Then in the second part, we're going to look at NumPy, which is the numeric foundation of, uh, of, of Python. And uh, in a really short introduction, then we will follow up with Pandas and finally go into time series analysis of Pandas. And this is um, a, a sample notebook I would love to quickly show here. So first of all, you will get uh, the opportunity to uh, if, you, if you are here in, in the chapter, so this is chapter six and it's about time series analysis as I just mentioned. So you always get the opportunity to like um, replay or do the, uh, the, the code samples that you will get in the book on your own. And so you can download all the material from the companion repository and this will allow you to interactively uh, execute the code here and, you know, compare your outcome here um, in an interactive fashion. And you obviously can also change things and play around, which is one of the nice things about these Jupyter Notebooks. And so 
uh, it, it'll give you a, a very good environment here to experiment and you will also have the option to play around with interactive charts here um, we can just you know see uh, some standard stuff that you can build and that sort of uh, would be especially uh, difficult to to build in, a, in an Excel spreadsheet so that um, is is the introduction to time series in chapter 6 then chapter 7 will continue with uh, showing you how pandas has some built-in commands to manipulate Excel files and as I initially said uh, you can do this on any platform that Python supports it doesn't require an Excel installation and so to to demonstrate what we will uh, go through like the case study that we will look at in chapter 7 uh, we will pull up here the Visual Studio code and you can see it's literally 10 lines of code the green part here is just comments so it's literally 10 lines of code and what we are trying to build here is basically aggregating a directory of Excel files so it's, it's one of the most common things I've seen uh, people have lots and lots of Excel files and they just need to somehow aggregate the data in it so we have here uh, two subdirectories one with xlsx files the, the new format of excel and then one of xls files and it's a you know it's a simple format it's it shows you some uh, sales figures it has uh, each of those has uh, a couple of, couple of like 10000 rows i believe up to 10,000 rows and so we're just going to go through all these um, documents and would like to produce uh, an aggregated report over these different um, sales sales figures that we get from the individual files and so when we execute this code then you will see that it reads in all these files and as I said it does so without relying on Excel so it's it's actually very quick and you see it's already done creating the report and so we can go here and open that report which will show you the aggregated sales figure per month and per store so it's a bit it's not very nicely formatted but like you know there's only so much you can expect in 10 lines of code but then we will actually continue in the next chapter in chapter 8 with the more lower level packages things packages like OpenPyXL, XLSX Writer, XLRD etc etc and um, this here then will will pick up the the we will pick up the case study again in in this chapter in chapter 8 I believe yes and um, we will add some styling to it and some charts so you can see it's definitely longer than 10 lines this time but when we um, run this 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 script again uh, we will end up um, soon with a little bit of a more professional uh, report than what we were building in the last chapter in chapter 7 so if you if you open this one you will see now we do have a chart included and the numbers are formatted here uh, have some conditional formatting and also as you can see it's got a title it's got some column width so it's really just um, making things uh, easily consumable so that is uh, chapter 7 and 8 reading reading information from existing Excel files uh, doing some magic with pandas behind the scenes things that we have learned in the previous part apply that to Excel data and then finally produce an Excel report out of it then uh, we're actually continuing to the last part uh, where we will learn how to automate Excel by using Excel wings so we can get another 
another um, look at one of those um, Jupyter notebooks. And so this time when we do play around with it, uh, we can easily load this into, into an Excel uh, document. So, uh, you know, it, it obviously does require Excel now, but it's interactive, which has quite a few advantages in some situations and you can you know remote control excel here from from the python side you can send over data and then read it back so chapter 8 sorry that would be chapter 9 is really about giving you the basics of how excel automation works and allowing you to understand the Excel object model, how things are organized internally in Excel. And this then um, will continue in, in chapter 10. We will actually learn how we can call Python code directly from Excel by clicking a button. Um, you don't have to run the Python code separately. So that's what we will learn in chapter 10. And this sort of builds up for chapter 11, where we will build the Python package tracker. It's a case study, and it's the one thing um, that I'm going to demo right now. So using all the knowledge that we've gathered in chapter 10, uh, we are going to be ready to build a um, typical business application. And so the Python package tracker is also included in the companion repository, but obviously it also includes all the instructions in the book to build it from scratch. So the Python package tracker here is, is a basic Excel user interface and it sort of combines uh, the most uh, common operations that people that I see people do with Excel and Excel wings. And so uh, one component is always talking to databases. So we have um, an introduction to databases in this chapter. And um, another, uh, another common scenario is downloading data from somewhere, from the web through a web API. And so in our case, what we do is actually we download data from PyPI, which is the package repository of Python. So in this case here, you see you will have the history of the different package releases um, here on the page and PyPI offers a web API where we can get this data programmatically. So what the tool does is actually it downloads the data, then stores it in a database and finally uh, displays it on the package tracker interface here. So I'm going to quickly demo how the tool is going to work. So you would start here and actually give give the tool a few packages that you would want to um, to add to your database. And you can see that uh, it was added correctly to the database. And then let's maybe add a second one. And maybe let's just do for for the fun of it. Let's just um, add uh, an error in, in a package, in a package that doesn't exist. And as you can see, you will get an error message over here. So let's fix that, add the package to the database so that we have like two packages to play around. And so the database has been created by Python in, in, in our backend code. And we are now able to use that uh, little application. So we can choose to see Excel wings and, and show the history. So in that moment, it's not going back to the internet. It works offline. It reads out the database, aggregates the data and displays it here in a, a matplotlib chart, which is the, the chart that you can create by using the pandas library. So you can also include the visualizations from the Python world in Excel very easily. And um, let's do that one more time for the other package that we've added to our database here. You can see, um, you can get sort of, you can keep track of how many releases uh, a particular package has and you can sort of understand how actively uh, developed something is. And then we also have the latest version here. You can see this was released uh, uh, about a month ago and you get 
the version number. So that's uh, the simple the simple case study that we will build in chapter, I believe, yes, 11. Um, and then finally, the last chapter is about user defined functions. And this is the only uh, topic in the whole book that only works on Windows. And so let's switch over to, to Windows. And um, in this chapter, we are going to learn the basics of how user defined function work with Excel wings. And we will uh, build it up and then finally um, finish this, this chapter with a little case study about Google Trends. So instead of having to go to Google Trends uh, homepage and download data and then copy paste it into Excel, uh, what we will do is basically we will build a user defined function which accepts a couple of IDs um, of 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 the of the search uh, term terms that uh, you can look for in in Google Trends, and uh, like a start and an end date here, and then basically uh, we'll return to you the data directly from Google Trends and. You can again uh, work uh, work out like a, a plotting function that works with um, the the Python libraries. So let's call that uh, plot history, and then that will actually produce the plot uh, in again in a matplotlib as a matplotlib plot produced by pandas in your Python user-defined functions. And then you can basically just change the input parameters here, and then it will go again to the, um, to the, to the web API, well, to, to Google Trends, and download the data and, and update the chart accordingly. All right, so this has been a very quick run through of what you can expect in in the in, in the book and I hope uh, you like it and I see you in the next video.